Hello and welcome to Your Business, Your Wealth. I am Paul Adams, your host, CEO of Sound Financial Group, and I am joined by a man who brings more pleasure to the world with his warm personality than the shirt he's wearing is blue. Corey <laughs> Shepard, so glad you're with me as always. That's a this is a deep blue shirt. So that is a that is a high high praise. <laughs> But of course, we haven't really talked to each other for a little bit because I was out of the country for a few days. So in it, Belgium, yeah. just uh, in Belgium. sampling sampling beers and culture and and steak uh, and frites. Just, yeah, don't forget the frites. And didn't you have a Belgian waffle, which is nearly uh, at least one? Yeah. yeah. And now here's here's the thing: I don't think a lot of people realize. If you go back to our past podcast episodes, Corey is now a full co-host. But for a long time, I realized our podcast production company named every episode as if Corey was a special guest. <laughs> There's like 20 <laughs> episodes in a row. It's like with Corey Shepard. I'm like, my name isn't even the title, but Corey's is. So I just oh, had with funny. our audience, I needed to share that. Like, what in the heck? Why was it? I literally took a backseat to Corey's identity in like 20 episodes and I'm happy for it. He <laughs> makes me look good. Almost as good as that blue shirt makes him look. Corey, today... We've got a special guest. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about controlling what often controls us. That is controlling our outlay, our spending, what goes off of our balance. She is a regular part of our lives. And in fact, many of the episodes we've had, we've talked about what best to do with assets, how to be more efficient, how to be more tax conscious. And with all of that, what we don't talk about often enough, not on this podcast, not in society overall, is how we actually deploy our spending on a monthly basis to increase our capture rate. How much money are we capturing from our income to put on our balance sheet to produce definite financial independence to fund our work optional lifestyle? The answer is it's not talked about enough. We're not doing it enough. And it's a conversation people run from. And who's going to help us with that today? is Doug Peterson of Get Priority Straight. Doug, welcome to Your Business, Your Wealth. Thank you. Great to be here. And well, and Doug, I appreciate the blue, the fellow blue shirt wear. This is this is good company. And actually, I, you know, I've heard your name mentioned in conversations with Paul for a while. I know you two have known each other, but I think this is the first time we're actually getting a chat. So this is, this is real exciting for me. And uh, Paul, you know, I know that you've spent more time with, with Doug, so... I have a bunch of questions, but I think you'll do a better job of explaining what he does that's different than what we do. Before I, I jump in, would you start Would you start there? I'll kick that off. So yeah. Doug has worked with me and my wife personally to be able to take all of our spending and put it in a, a set of systems and tools and mindsets. Now, think about this for a moment. Wait, Paul, aren't you the guy that owns a financial advising firm? Yes. But what I also don't do is write my own will and trust. <laughs> like there right. are skill sets. We may be your financial quarterback, but we have all kinds of other players on the team. And Doug is one of those players that specifically teaches people how to look at, assess, record, and then talk about household spending. Where are we deploying most of our money? Now think about this for a second. If we get our clients up to an appropriate capture rate of 20% of gross income, we're dealing with 20% of the money. Now there's taxes, let's just call that another 30-ish to 50-ish percent, depending on household income. Then there's a wide swath of income that nobody really talks about that we just hope it all works out. That's what Doug has been able to help my wife and I with. Doug, anything else you feel like I left out of Get Priority Straight and what you and your company do? Uh, yes. Should we leave it there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty Man, sure that's going to create a question yeah. for the podcast <laughs> audience. <laughs> Go on. Well, first of all, you know, my body type is much more like a wide receiver. And, <laughs> and I feel like up, so we'll go with that. <laughs> you know, just half of the United States or more, probably. So there's that. But what it really is, Paul, is that there's just such a tremendous amount of waste. People don't know what they spend. And if they're going to work with somebody like Sound Financial Group, and they could eliminate 5% of their waste painlessly and not affect their lifestyle and add that to the portfolio. Now we're at 25%. What's that do to your financial goals? It, it exponentially increases someone's financial capacity and or, and this is the key, 
it's not just about how much more wealth somebody creates at age 65, but maybe it's the amount of autonomy they have at age 58 now instead of 65. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the difficulty is that, that people think of managing money like lack. Like I can't have as much stuff, but we waste so much. Dave Ramsey talks about 10 to 20% right. waste if you don't decide before you spend it, what you're going to spend. Now, that's an amazingly big number. I'm going to suggest it's five. Mm. But we won't even notice it if we get smart and decide so, in advance where we're going to spend it. So, Doug, when you're starting to work with people, where where do you find them when you meet them? Like they're swimming in a bunch of stuff, questions, thoughts. Like what's the... What are some of the big problems that you see when you first meet with people? Like what's causing the issue in the first place? It's really not paying attention. When you run a business, you know how much is coming in, how much is going out, and you decide right. what projects you're gonna fund. When you're running your household, you're so busy either raising families or running businesses or trying to stay fit or strain and say current with your your profession. We just have a lot going on. Maybe you've got a relationship. They don't take any extra time. <laughs> we're gonna wake up Saturday morning and say, I'm gonna completely get on top of my finances. 24 seven, knowing exactly where I stand and have complete transparency with my spouse or significant other. Uh, well, often they think I'd like to, but how do you get there from here? Well, and the intimidating piece to me, it seems like even if I if someone woke up this Saturday and said, I'm going to get on top of my finances, they could do it for that day. But how long do they continue to feel on top of like it doesn't last forever? It's not just a one time thing because life keeps keeps happening. So what do you how do you help people get into that, you know, go from a vicious circle to a virtuous cycle? where it's not the problem over and over again, but they're actually fixing it over time. Well, it's a complete mindset shift. And let me do a, a brief analogy. Let's say you were trying to get in your garage and can't fit your car in, and you have had it. So you clean your garage. You get rid of a bunch of garbage. You put like with like, and you have enough room for stuff. And it looks great. And a year later, you walk into the same garage and say, it's worse. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> And it was this big brain that set it up and cleaned it, that managed it, that got it in the mess it was in the first place. So for business owners that have used you know, small business software like QuickBooks, if you set it up properly, how many times do you have to set it up? Once. Once, I think, yeah. You just add a few accounts, make a few adjustments, add some items, whatever it is. So I don't teach people how to do that. Because if you do it and learn how to manage it, you don't have to clean it up again. What I do is I come in in one sitting, get it 90% set up, and then I spend 10 weeks teaching them how to manage it so that they learn a new behavior, learn a new system, and they're 90% up in the first setting. Well, this is, reminds me a little bit of a saying I, my father told me about a relatively famous dog trainer when he was growing up. And he, the dog trainer said, I can train anybody's dog in about 10 minutes, but it takes me 10 weeks to train the owner. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife and mine's experience, that was certainly the case, is that there were certain things. One of the benefits of working with Doug is he used this program called You Need a Budget. Uh, you, we're gonna have a link to that with a free offer from YNAB to be able to use their platform free for like 34 days. And yet, You Need a Budget was the tool. And Doug and his team are super well-versed on the tool. They got all of our stuff already in the tool before we started getting our coaching on how to use the tool, spending, setting up spending accounts. Or, and what I mean by that is like budgeting categories in different areas. So we actually became aware. And to put that in perspective, it was taking my wife over four hours a month to be able to get everything put in. But Doug, what is... Uh, how long does it take you to reconcile your budgeting every single month with you and your wife? Well, it's a weekly habit of about a half an hour, which includes paying all your bills, knowing exactly where you stand and reconciling every account. So that now, includes, I bet most people are not spending 
less than 30 minutes a month just paying bills, let alone reconciling, right. tracking, and budgeting. Uh, yeah, on average, people are saying they're spending three to four hours a month. I had one couple using YNAB spending two hours every weekend, just Whoa. running it incorrectly. And they were already using YNAB. Yeah, for wow. several weeks. But wow. A paradigm of how we do stuff. So one of the things that I teach, which YNAB doesn't stress, is to enter a transaction while you do it. When people think about managing money <laughs> and tracking transactions, they go, oh, I know what tracking transactions is. I'll just go home with all my receipts and tonight I'll enter them. Who wants to do that? But while you're standing in line, you spend 20, 10 to 20 seconds Entering what you spent, by the way, it's easier to remember what you spent right mm -hmm. when you spend it. And you're yeah. done. And that's so something, something, wow. something for me is just that hitting the, so there's a, YNAB is an online website dashboard. Along with it is an app that resides on my phone. Now I was like the worst purveyor of this, like gathering up. Oh, by the way, I spent this, I spent that. And my wife having to figure it all out later. Now I hit the plus button on YNAB. My iPhone knows where I am and it remembers, oh, Paul's at the shell station because the same shell station I always stop at automatically knows what credit card I'm likely putting it on. And all I have to do is type in an amount. So the actual program learns your spending habits and makes it easier to input those transactions based upon the behavior of you and your mobile device. Yeah. Enormously beneficial to me and my family to make, just make the tracking of it easier because if we're not tracking our spending, just aware of where it's going, there's no space to develop that intentionality that you mentioned, Doug. I've owned businesses for over 30 years. I started this in 2014. December of 2016, I had to completely restart it because I messed it up so bad. Mm. I was using the way I always manage money in my head to manage money with this system. And it's different. I had to start over. I couldn't clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know. It's easy to start over. Doug, what, what's showing up for me is the discipline, the, the difference between having like brute force discipline and setting up structures. Cause I think life, what life is so busy and discipline is going to fail eventually. Cause we're going to get into a situation where it hits our buttons just the right way. You know, I like to tell clients, everybody's susceptible. Like I realized early on, I can't do day to day spending with credit cards because credit card companies are really good. Like just thinking, Oh, I'll get points for this. Like it makes it, less expensive to, to buy a thing. Like I will spend like I have a basically unlimited budget, but if I have a debit card and I put a certain amount of money that I want to spend for that, you know, week or two week period, then I just have to at least think about it. So I think that's, that's the, the difference. Can you talk about, you know, how, how you help people you know, create that plan in advance? Cause I think that's what I'm, what I'm hearing. It's not being reactive, but it's saying like so many of our clients and yours too, have they have a lot of choices it's not can i afford this it's what do i want to spend on so can you talk about how you and i help people sort through well, those kind of questions them, what do i want to spend on what do i want my money to do for me ah so there's three levels of motivation and paul knows that i've been doing executive coaching and mentoring for the last 18 years of those three levels there's discipline like you mentioned which is exhausting we can only be disciplined for so long there's being driven yeah which is destructive, right? People that are driven often ruin marriages and health and, you know, they just push, push, push. Yep. There's no balance. But a dream creates a pull. And that's what we want. What do we want? Mm. Not what do we have to cut back on, but what do we want? You mentioned points for a moment, a moment ago. Yeah, yeah. And so what we do is decide what we want. And if what we want is to get points and to use our money well and to fly around the world, what I also help people do, I've got 1.2 million airline points just from my cash flow. That'll get me to Italy about 19 times at about $300 a ticket. Yeah. So there's lots of ways that if you pay attention, you can leverage 
your spending. So that it actually is cutting your own expenses. And Ooh. you can't do it by accident. Now, here's another little thing that's kind of interesting. I'll sit down with someone and say, so we, we now imagine we just figured out their last month. And I said, so going out, you spent $1,500, right? And then for groceries, you spent $1,700. Okay, now imagine 10 minutes has passed. So we're going to decide what you're going to spend next month. How much do you think you'll spend going out? I don't know, three fifty. You spent fifteen hundred last month. <laughs> How about groceries, six hundred. You spent seventeen hundred last month. <laughs> People have no idea. They do believe, though. They do have an idea. They really believe. I know what it costs us to live. Paul, was it any different than what you thought it cost you to live, but what the actual was? Oh yeah. Well, and. And it is, I think, something that plagues, and I don't mean this to be like a uh, struggle bus being in top 1% income, like that's not it. But the more income you make, the easier it is to lose track of the amount of money it costs you to live. And and it is it is not like, the, like I will tell you right now, uh, I know people that go to our church and and their households make less than $100,000 a year, they know where absolutely every single dollar is going because I've had a chance to help them with some financial, and they are super clear. Whereas our clients making 800,000, a million, a million five a year, it's very easy for them to have not a clue about what it takes to live their life. And they also get what I would say is a both, it's a blessing in that they don't have to think about it and a curse that they don't have to think about it is they don't have to think about what you've talked about, Doug, which is what is it you want? What do you want your life to be? And are we being intentional with every dollar being spent to be able to create the life that we want for ourselves and our family? Because if we don't have to pay attention to where the money's going, we have that much surplus, we can also have some slippage, money just getting lost in the sauce of life. Uh, it goes back to what you've talked to me about in the past, that Parkinson's law of how the money will just, and the spending mm. will just expand naturally. We can't, we don't have to worry about it. It's like the ever expanding universe and expenses that will ever expand to meet the amount of income that you make. How do you, as, as you're thinking about that, how do you take people from the idea of, okay, we need to pay attention to our spending, all that, and yet still get you in the place where spouses are able to talk about their money together without that being a massive stress inducing event? So, first of all, people don't have any problem with wanting to track what they're doing. They just don't know how. They'd mm -hmm. love to know where all their money's going because they don't know. It's like, okay, look, I know, I know, we brought home fifteen thousand. We did. Where is it? We've only <laughs> identified about nine thousand in expenses each month. Where does it keep going? And when it comes to spouses, so answer the question for me. How much am I talking about? Paul, you're spending too much. Mm -hmm. How much? On what? Imagine now you just decided, you know what? We're going to decide where to put all our money. We're going to give every dollar a job. Now the question goes, oh, you want to buy that? What buckets it come out of? Can you imagine how much less emotionally loaded mm. Acquisite accusation of you're spending too much based on my values, not my wife's values. Difference is what the difference would be. It's huge. Instead of what bucket? That is amazing. So, Doug, I think this is a great place to go to commercial because we may have just solved money in relationships once and for all forever. And <laughs> I want to. We want to ask you a couple more questions about that. So. Uh, Stay with us. We take a, a quick break to hear a message from Sound Financial Group. When we come back, Doug Peterson's recipe for never uh, letting couples fight about money ever again. Ever again. We'll back soon. Ever again. Guaranteed. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm interrupting our show for a really important reason. We have a brand new white paper we're hoping you'll get value out of. Some of you actually might not even need the white paper. You might be ready to talk with Corey or I or our other team members about our philosophy. We'd be honored to do that with you. And it's in your control as to whether or not after that you would want to apply to become a client. 
We just want to impart more knowledge to you and make you better equipped to deal with the financial institutions and every offer that comes at you. But in the meanwhile, we also have this white paper that we want to give you, get in your hands to help be able to shift the way that you think about money. This white paper is going to show you three of the biggest mistakes we see people make and six ways to fix those mistakes to get you and your family on the most efficient track toward financial independence possible. You can get that by emailing us at info at sfgwa.com. That's info at sfgwa.com. And we'll look forward to hearing from you soon. We'll get it right out to you. We hope you read it. We hope it opens up your mind and puts you in a position to better be able to design and build a good life. Now back to our show. And welcome back to Your Business, Your Wealth with our special guest, Doug Peterson. So Doug, when we went to commercial, I joked about couples never fighting ever again about money because of your secret sauce. That may or may not be true. We'll, we'll come back to that. But on the break, I thought you must meet some folks at a point where they do have some arguments about money. What's the best story you heard about couples disagreeing about money or spending? I have a lot of them. <laughs> my favorite story is about my mother-in-law and father-in-law. Oh, this yeah. will be good. Let's add right in. So he would always get angry and say, Mary, you're just spending too much money. You got to not buy so many shoes. And she finally had had it. Now she's 100% Italian. And so don't mess with that. Right. She said she, she took his shoes. This is 10 years after they got married. And this is actually a real shoe. And she bronzed it and said, you'll never have to buy another shoe. This will last forever. His shoe. His shoe. His shoe. Yeah. You look closely, it's got wear marks. <laughs> <laughs> so for those this of is... you not watching on YouTube, this will be a worthwhile clip. I can see the thumbnail of this video having Doug holding up that shoe. <laughs> this seems, that's scary. I mean, this is like, like the mob with the uh, with the cement shoes, like you don't want to mess with. Yeah. with the, <laughs> <you know? laughs> oh, but so Doug, you know, I think that a lot of people, my guess would be from what I've seen that a lot of couples end up having disagreements about money, but they're quiet ones, like they're festering because they're not really talking about it the whole time, uh, and you know that's probably because. People get stressed out and they don't want to talk about it. And so it builds and builds and builds and, and fights. So talk to me about this bucket system you mentioned, like how that you've seen that help couples in not having disagreements about money and spending. You know, often it's not the big disagreements that cause problems. It's the little ones that build up. Mm. And so let me use me as an example. For years, now here, remember, I'm an executive coach and mentor. I should know how to do this stuff. <laughs> Yet I'm still figuring out how to be married. <laughs> someday nah never mind I'm not even no. gonna we so, all are we so all are yeah. I'm having a rough time anybody had any rough cash flow years and I'm paying the bills and my wife would come home and she goes look what I got these shoes I got two of them for this price they're great and this outfit is great and she wasn't even spending a ton of money but I didn't have enough money to make ends meet I was having some rough months so every time I'm supposed to be excited, you just got this new thing you really like. And I wasn't. Well, when we started actually knowing where our money mm. goes, she returns half of what she buys. I had no idea. Oh, wow. not oh, she oh, has Spotify to return. Money. She just has uh. a habit of returning half of what she buys. But every time she walked in the door with stuff, you were losing you your another. stuff. Cause you're thinking like, I'm sure wow. you were polite, but internally you're just like, Oh my god! I was going, we are not on the same page. Come on. How many shoes do you need? I mean, whatever the dialogue is yes. now. It's, oh, that's cute. Nice. Great. This is one of the things he does for pleasure shops. I don't. And returns. And, and returns. returns. That's and part of it. You ever do that? They buy clothes, they try them on, they didn't quite fit right. Now you can just have them shipped. I mean, it's, it's so easy. But that was such yeah. a profound moment. And that's one of the things that inspired this company is that we're now on the same page. We have never been 100% on the same page. And part of that, 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. The same. And we're planning trips to Italy. We're going to New York. Yeah. We're using our mind. Wow. We're hanging out with our grandkids. We're having a blast. We're having more fun now than we've ever had. And from what you've said so far, it sounds like part of that is, you know, there's a bucket that shoe spending comes out of, and you both know that there's money set aside for that already. So it's it's already, the decision's already been made before the purchase is, has <laughs> happened. Could you, this, could you talk about some of the tools that you use? We've already mentioned YNAB, because I think that's probably a big part in making that happen. Like how do folks start building those structures with some of the tools that you have? Well, by the way, we don't have a shoes bucket, a socks bucket, and a shirts bucket. <laughs> Good. Good. She just does whatever she wants with it. Perfect. All right. And by the way, there's another fund too, which is the fun fund, where you don't have to go mm -hmm. to your house and ask permission. You've got a few thousand dollars to spend when you feel like it. But it's and I unlimited. There is a point at which, right. by the way, budget meetings take us about two minutes a month. They are just painless and quick. Now, you, you had asked about tools. Yeah. So YNAB is a good one. We're going to offer a, a URL so you can get a 34-day trial. And they have lots of videos. There's lots of good information. Another one is Credit Karma. Credit Karma is a free app, so you can look at what your credit report is, your uh, car insurance rates, health insurance rates, everything. Life insurance ties into your credit score. You might as well maximize it. There are several other tools depending on what you want to do, and it's pretty customized. It just depends on what people are trying to accomplish. That I would say those two are really the, the beginning foundation, and we don't need 20 tools. We don't need right. this complicated. We, the idea is to maximize our time so that we don't spend very much time at this, and we know where we spend and we decide where our money goes and then we enjoy life more. Let's not spend more time learning more tools and keeping up on things. That makes sense. Yeah. Huge. I mean, and I, I you know, apps. <laughs> there, then there are many and you know, one maybe you didn't mention is uh, a bit, I'm sure you know about it. You're being polite is something like mint, which is the classic age old, like one of the earliest ones in the industry. And unlike YNAB, you can use it for free, I think, unlimited. But the difference I point out to people is that Mint isn't free. They're making money by advertising services to you constantly. I used Mint as an early adopter. I just kind of got tired of being advertised to left and right while I was trying to figure out my spending. Whereas what I've enjoyed about YNAB is that you're paying for it and it's not, it's not an expensive service, but no ads. <laughs> which is like a very like, big refuge for me. There's a couple other things that come into play too is best practices. How many people have all their passwords of their spouse? If something happened to their spouse, what would they do? So we implement LastPass so that you have, mm. it's a free password program so that now you have access to everything, uh, which I think is really, really important. Huge. Doug, so when somebody's thinking about this, they're listening to this episode, that like, great, I got some tools, maybe some mindsets, awareness I need to build around my spending, but I'm not quite, I don't know that I can get it over the finish line either with my spouse or with the tools or I, I might not block out at the time because time's too busy or I tried YNAB before and it didn't work. If somebody wanted to have a conversation with you, what is the next step in that? Well, the next step is just to set up a conversation. Uh, typically, I work over Zoom. We just talk about what are your goals, what are your issues, what are your challenges, what do you want to accomplish? And if it makes sense and you like what you hear, then I'll put together an offer letter and you can decide if this is something that would make sense for you if you accept my offer. Right on. And what uh, what's the best way for somebody to reach you? I know we're going to have it in the show notes, but just in case somebody's driving and they want to write it down on a notepad, pull over hopefully first. Yeah. Stoplight. Yeah. All right. So my email address is Doug at GPS PDQ. Get priority straight pretty damn quick, but <laughs> I like it. It's 206-264-4424. All right on. Well, Doug, I'm so glad you could be here. I cannot recommend enough the value that a couple can get in at least having that initial conversation with Doug. He may or may not be able to make you an offer, but 
that initial conversation, just asking what's important to couples, all that can be tremendous, especially around spending and bridging the gap between where you are now and where it is you want to be as it relates to your spending, or maybe not even spending less, but you want to hold your spending still while you continue to accelerate your income over time. That's one thing we notice all the time for entrepreneurs. We can always lean on the fact that we can make more money and we let that solve most of the household cash flow issues instead of having all of the cash flow issues solved with initial intention and strategy and then being able to circle back. So Doug, I'm so glad you could be here today. It's great to be here. Thanks. Now, for everybody as you're listening, we know one of the most important things that you may take away from this show is a better awareness around money. And sometimes this idea of budgeting and spending can nearly make you roll your eyes because you're sitting there saying, I know I need to spend less, but it's impossible or insurmountable or my spouse does this or my spouse does that. And here's the thing that I want all of you to just think about or reflect on. Nearly everybody listening would benefit from jumping on that free trial of YNAB. Why? Because when you realize how much spending is going on and the amount of unawareness that you have around spending, it'll start to make you aware that there could be a gap in efficiency. And a, a coach of mine from many, many years ago, some of you as listeners know who this man is, his name's Dr. Fernando Flores, talked about mood. And with mood, he said, mood is an automatic assessment that could be grounded or ungrounded. And you might feel like everything's going fine with your money. And that might be ungrounded. Like you might be in a good mood for all the wrong reasons, or <laughs> you might be stressed out. We had a client I was speaking to just earlier today where one spouse is stressed out because of the way that they pay certain bills while the other spouse pays the other bills. And despite the fact that one spouse makes double what the other spouse makes, there's like a, a man, I feel like there maybe isn't enough because they're paying all the regular household bills and just being able to get on the same page with money in a way that gives you and your spouse the ability to be in an appropriate mood about your money because you're going to do it based upon grounded assessments, knowing where your money's going. And what we want more than anything else for all of you listening is that too often, even at high levels of income, we can end the month asking, where did our money go? Where, where did it go? And what we want to do instead is put you in a position that you tell it where to go every month instead of asking where it went. So that's the challenge I want to issue to everybody today is just take the time to first find out where your money's going. You know, I'll, I'll give a, one, one final thought for you as we leave here is how often we have a conversation with somebody when we're working on their investments, they say, well, where did the money go? And why is the market doing this? And why is this happening? Why is that happening? And literally, it might be the difference of a few thousand dollars. And yet over a year's time, it might be forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 differential by just being more intentional with your money, telling it where to go instead of asking where it went to put you and your family in the best possible position that you're spending. The cash flow going outside of your bank account every single month is actually contributing to you being able to design and build a good life. And we hope that this episode has contributed to you being able to design and build a good life. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, ring that bell, and when you get a moment, pick up my book on Amazon, Sound Financial Advice. It's the kind of book that's easy to read, but hard to forget all the knowledge you learned.